Hello there, today is Monday, July the 4th. Uh, if you're in America here, happy Independence Day. It's what we're celebrating as a nation. Um, also, we're reading through the Word of God. We're celebrating that because remember, remember, this is uh, maybe one of my uh, little soapbox moments or pet peeve things. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where it falls exactly, but uh, I'm glad I live in America. But I know that I am a citizen of heaven first, and so are you. The kingdom of God first our nation second. We want to celebrate the kingdom of God. That's what we're going to do. We're going to read through the word today. 1 Kings 10 and 11, 2 Chronicles 3, and 1 Timothy 6. Uh, we're looking at 1 Kings. It's where I'm going to talk about. It's the end of Solomon's life. Now, King Solomon, he's the third king of the nation of Israel. He's uh, a little, an incredibly wise person. I remember when he was young, he was asked by God, what do you want in this vision, this dream he had? And he said, I want wisdom. And God said, because you asked for wisdom, I will give you that. And I will give you long life and I'll give you riches and all these things. And he was incredibly wise. We've talked before going through this about how Solomon had these decisions where he had insight to things that other people didn't have. Uh, we know he was incredibly wealthy. We know he built the temple. We know he oversaw the whole project right there. But at the end of Solomon's life, he begins to fall into a trap that so many of us fall into. And that trap was that he began to fell, fall in love with himself, with his own splendor, with the pride of his nation. And he began to forget that he was first part of God's kingdom, second a part of the kingdom he was overseeing. It's much like so many people I know, maybe you do too, I don't know how you feel or where you land, and I'm not wanting to be offensive, but I want to be blunt and direct. So many of us forget who we belong to first, and we fall in love with ourselves instead. Solomon did this very same thing. Very same thing. It says in chapter 11, he loved many foreign women. Many. They were from nations, it says in verse 2, about which the Lord had told the Israelites. He had told the Israelites, do not intermarry with them, for your hearts will turn after their gods. Do not intermarry. Solomon, though, with all of the wisdom that he had, he said, now I'll do it my way instead. He began to follow these women. Uh, it says in chapter 11, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. And now, first of all, why would you want to be connected to a thousand women with a thousand opinions? I don't know, but Solomon did. It was an unwise thing, characteristically unwise of him. He follows this, and then we begin to read down through chapter 11. It says the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart turned away from the Lord. It's, it's just like God said what happened. If you intermarry with people who are outside of my family, outside of my kingdom, then your hearts will turn away. And he began to do so. And he began to fall into a trap that he couldn't get out of. The Lord turned away from Solomon because of his attitude, because his heart was turning away from God. And Solomon at the end of chapter 11 dies. I want to, I want to offer this challenge to you. We live in a world. We live in a world, much like Solomon did, with people who worship all kinds of things, all kinds of idols, and all kinds of uh, different religions and gods and things around. And, and you might think I'm just talking about the major world religions, uh, Islam and Judaism and Buddhism and Hinduism, and I'm not. I'm talking about we live in a world with people who worship all kinds of things, idols and gods like, like football and baseball and education and wealth and jobs and power. We live in a world where all these things are worshiped. They are little idols that we carry with us, little gods that we carry with us. And God has told us to not be unequally yoked in our relationships, to not enter relationships with people that don't know they also belong to his kingdom first. Because when we enter other relationships, our hearts will turn after their gods, after their idols, and we will turn away from God as well. And the Lord will be angry with us and displeased with us, and he'll eventually turn away from us. I want to encourage you. Even today, Independence Day, I want to encourage you to make sure to remember always that you belong first to the kingdom of God. 
First, your allegiance to a nation does not matter compared to your membership, your citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. I want to encourage you second to remember that when you enter relationships romantically with friendships, with people that you allow to speak in and influence your life, when you enter into relationships, remember that God has told you to not allow the influences of the world to guide your life. Do not be unequally yoked or you'll turn straight to and keep your heart and your mind focused on the fact that you are a member of the kingdom of God. If you can stay focused on that, then you have the power to change the world by speaking the words of Jesus. If you forget that, then Satan has the power to change you. I want to encourage you today, as you go through your your job, your, your family, your celebrations, whatever you're doing today, I want to encourage you to remember who you belong to and to live with a wisdom that Solomon forgot. And follow God first, seek his kingdom first, and let everything else work itself out. Hope that helps you this week as you start a new week here, uh, living for the kingdom of God. Until I see you again, you are sent.